Hi everybody, it's Anne with Art on the Creek. Well, things are gonna get messy in the studio today. Do you remember the video where I shared with you how to get the most out of your sketchbook? Well, today I think what we need to do is take a look at our palette and see how you can get the most out of your palette. Some of those colors that you may never go for might be great mixers for you. Are you ready? Let's go look at some colors. This is uh, my collection of two paints. I have some of them taken out of here. They might be off camera. This is a 33 well palette that I absolutely love. I'll put a link to it because you have a ton of mixing space in here. You can take this out. You have two full trays here and I want to say you can take this, this one out also. Here we go. There we go. Woohoo. So yes, this pops out have to just hold this here. Can you, can you trust me? I'm so sorry. I'm already in the middle of this here and I don't want to lift that up, but you've got another full flat mixing well under here. So you can take this out, which obviously I never do. And then, uh, have those three enormous mixing wells. So I really love this palette. It has a silicone seal all the way around. So it keeps your paints uh, in really good condition. It keeps them from getting moldy. Here's something else I think that you should have if you're going to be buying tube paints. It is a crimper and that will help you get the most out of your tubes. Now, when you are using the crimper tool, you're just going to put this in here, hold it down like so. And which way do I want to crimp it? Crimp it toward the, the collar of the tube and you will get every bit of that paint out. And that is something that will make you feel pretty good. Now you could go in there with a toothpick and get the rest of that out if you wanted to, but for this video's sake, I'm going to stop here. That would make me feel really good. That would make me feel like I got my money's worth out of this tube. And here's another tool that you might want to have. This will help you open tubes that may not be too cooperative. It's just a really good way to grip that tube and get it started. Please don't use your teeth several reasons your orthodontist won't like you <laughs> and some paints are not uh not too friendly if ingested so I, don't, I would hate to have you have anything toxic in your system uh, which reminds me after every time you play with your art supplies remember to wash your hands thoroughly can i get all of this buff titanium in here i don't think so i think that's going to have to wait for another time if that is too awkward to work the the crimper in while you're putting the paint because it does make the the tube wiggle you can just wait until you've already filled the pan put the cap on and then crimp it and just go until you meet some resistance you don't need to go uh, full force on that because uh, if you do go too far then when you open it again all your paint's going to squirt out and it's going to be a mess i'd also recommend having some toothpicks to help you level out your pans after you filled them and uh, you can also use them to re-stir in case you have some binder separation. And I'd also recommend having a pair of uh, nitrile gloves or some kind of disposable gloves at your, at your side because you really can get pretty messy doing this. And uh, sometimes those paints just don't want to come out from underneath your fingernails. When you're building your palette, just in general, I would recommend you have a warm and cool primary. And from there, then you can add what I would call specialty paints things like the Buff Titanium or uh, Jeanne Briant, things like that. You can add those as you need to. So that's why I like this 33 well palette to work for where you're gonna keep it at home because it's, it's kind of big. Let's go over some really good primaries that you can have in your, in your palette. So Alizarin Crimson, it is one that I use very often. Absolutely love it. I'm going to show you a mixed primary palette here. I'm starting out with Alizarin Crimson, that would be your cool red. And then I have Pyrrole Red Deep, which is a warm. Then we'll move on to Hansa Yellow Light for a cool yellow, and Hansa Yellow Deep for a warm yellow. For my cool blue, I'm going to use Prussian Blue and for the warm blue, Ultramarine. These are pretty standard paints. You'll be able to find them and you don't have to use these exact shades, but this will be a really good place for you to start to really let you expand your palette. Having that warm and cool primary is really essential to learning how to mix color. 
And that is just one of the tools you need to be a more successful watercolor artist. Now these browns that I'm creating here, or tans I should say, are complexion tones that you can use in watercolor. Right now they look a little out of context, but what I've done is I've mixed the Hansa Yellow Light, Alizarin Crimson, and Prussian Blue for that first one. The second one is a mix of Carbazole Violet and Red Iron Oxide. And then in the bottom, the one on the bottom left there, that is a, a warm skin tone, which is Hansa Yellow Deep, Pyrrole Red Deep, and Ultramarine Blue. You can vary these to, uh, to become whatever shade of complexion you need just by tweaking the ratios. All right, let's look at some fun mixes here now with some greens. Now here is this permanent green pale. There's nothing pale about this color. It's the color of Mike Wazowski. It's a great color. It's a very uh, cartoony green. It is a color uh, spring green. It's even lighter than spring green, or richer than spring green, excuse me, because it's not quite as sheer, but you can use it in a dilute manner and come up with a very nice spring green. So this is M. Graham's Permanent Green Light. It's a warm green. You can see the yellow undertones to it. And then just as a contrast, let me show you a very cool green. It doesn't have a huge pigment punch, but it is really a nice color. And now let's take a look at this orange. This is the Scarlet Pyrrole. Beautiful color for sunsets. It seems a bit shocking. You could also use it to mix for, uh, for skin tones, and I will show you that one. But you can get this to be really sheer and beautiful. It's just, it's just very pretty. Uh, we can look at the Indian yellow. So just real quickly, I'll lay down this Indian yellow, which is uh, one of the convenience colors that I think you should have on your palette. I did say specialty colors earlier because there's so many dual pigments and uh, really fun colors out there that you can have. But as far as convenience colors, I really like the permanent green pale, a highland green, and uh, or rather a cobalt turquoise, uh, Indian yellow, and that scarlet pyrrole. And then with that complexion circle in the center, the darker one, that one is made up of a carbazole violet. You can also use uh, dioxazine purple and that PR101, which is a red iron oxide, or you could have a burnt sienna. Either one of those would really be lovely additions to your palette. And this one here is a buff titanium. I think that one is very important to have. Um, I do have a set of white gouache, a tube of white gouache rather that I keep to the side, but I think you'll really like a buff titanium. It's just different enough that it will really enhance some rich and mellow tones to your artwork. Now just to take a quick look at these greens that I've mixed, um, I took that permanent green pale and I mixed it, uh, if we're just reading it like a book there, so starting with the upper left, that one's mixed with the pyrrol scarlet, then next is the Indian yellow, the, uh, the carbazole violet, the Prussian blue, ultramarine blue, and the last one on that upper row is mixed with red iron oxide. Moving down to the lower four, we've got it mixed with Hansa yellow light, Hansa yellow deep, the alizarin crimson, and finally the pyrrole red deep. And then just adding on two more final little swatches here, we've got that green mixed with the buff titanium, and then I just wanted to show you the straight uh, uh, permanent green pale, just so you can kind of have a little comparison there. So you can see by taking this really bright Mike Wazowski green <laughs> and mixing it with some of the colors on your palette, you can create such a wide range of colors. And that's why it's important to have these convenience colors or these mixers available to you on your palette. Now I want to jump over to some of the mixes that I've got going with the, uh, with the, the Scarlet Pyrrole. The first one on that, we're going to read it again, top to bottom, left to right. So the first one is mixed with the Prussian blue, and then we've got an ultramarine blue, and then that darker one is mixed with the Carbazole violet, and that has so much texture in it. It's really, really nice. The larger square in the upper right-hand corner is mixed with buff titanium, and then below that, it's just the swatch of the straight scarlet pyrrole. Now I'm jumping over, I'm jumping around a little bit here. This is the Highlands Green. I'm mixing it with the buff titanium. That creates such a lovely shade for like robin's eggs or things like that. I really like that one a lot. Continuing on left to right, we've got the Highland Green mixed with the Scarlet Pyrrole, which creates a very interesting uh, bluish, uh, very rich texture there. The Scarlet Pyrrole with the Red Iron Oxide creates almost the color of a campfire. 
and then on the right there it's mixed with Indian yellow so those uh, those make some beautiful bright mixes the bottom left I've got the scarlet pyrrole mixed with ultramarine lovely texture in that one and then these remaining swatches here are back to the highland green we've got it with the ultramarine the Prussian blue, which creates an amazing amount of texture. And then the two circles there, the one on top, it's mixed with Hansa Yellow Light. And then finally, this one that we're going to do down below will be Hansa Yellow Deep. And once again, when you have these colors at your disposal, you can create so many mixes, so many combinations. And it might be that that color in your palette, that paint in your palette that you just never dip your brush into, it might be something that holds the key for you to really open your your envelope as an as an artist and be able to tap into these colors it, it might also save you money because you can uh, mix some of these great colors without having to purchase any new paints at all you might have it already i've got room for one more here i'm going to take that highland green which again is a cobalt turquoise and i'm going to mix it with that carbazole violet because it should give me a beautiful deep blue and it it does this is so fun to watch this appear on the paper i think because i love watching the granulators mix uh, cobalt is a wonderful granulator and then that uh, the carbazole violet is just such a beautiful deep bluish purple that you can really get a deep deep shade that you just can't achieve in a whole lot of other ways um, I really like using granulators to mix my colors because that's how you can let the paints work for you. You can use them in any kind of natural texture, animal skin, uh, clothing, any kind of landscape that would need texture. You can really open a lot of opportunity up for you as an artist by just mixing what you might already have on your palette as long as you have some key mixers. So we have some really vibrant mixes here. And a lot of the pigments that I have are pure pigments. Uh, when we started out with this, looking at the uh, Alizarin Crimson, the Pyro Red Deep, Hansi Yellow Light, Hansi Yellow Deep, Prussian Blue, and Ultramarine Blue. Those are some good examples that I would recommend for a primary palette. You can uh, substitute the Pyro Red Deep for a Cadmium Red, the Hansi Yellow Light, a Lemon Yellow would look fine. Uh, I would definitely go with a Hansa Yellow Deep though, or you could do a Cad Yellow if that's what you want to do. Uh, Prussian Blue or a Thalo Blue, and then Ultramarine. Definitely recommend Ultramarine. Now, if you're building your own palette and you either didn't want to go with convenience colors or you wanted to definitely have these next ones that I'm going to mention in your palette, and they are wonderful to have, I would suggest augmenting your six warm and cool primaries with a Yellow Ochre, Burnt Sienna, Indigo, and a Payne's Gray. Uh, we went over how to make some skin tones here, different different levels of skin tone, and then you can just adjust and play with these. If you are going to do a portrait, I would recommend definitely spending some time on your palette, mixing the ratio that you need for your subject, and then writing that mix down. Um, the uh, the the ones the mixers that I have are permanent green pale, Highland green. I really like this one, and uh, Indian yellow. Scarlet Pyrrole. This one is one that I always forget about and I really should use it more because I love it. Carbazole Virat, uh, Red Iron Oxide. I do use that one a lot. And these are the paints that I really rely on the most in addition to Buff Titanium. And that one's here. It's a PW6. So a lot of these are pure pigments. That's purely just um, coincidence because I do have a lot on here that are not uh, one single pigment. I just wanted to show you today how to go through building your own palette. All of these colors are very rich, very vibrant. This color chart is kind of a hot mess. I will be completely honest with you because I didn't make it big enough, but that is on me. Look at this one right here. It bled into each other, but this is why I like doing things fast and furious because I can discover things that I maybe wouldn't have discovered otherwise. So this one, which I absolutely love because you can see the Prussian blue, the Indian yellow, and the pyro red mixed in there all together. That is just such a lovely, fun color. Wouldn't that be neat to do trees and shadows of trees? We've got some other ones that ended up like that. This whole range here. So this would be Prussian blue, uh, ultramarine, and the pyro red deep. If you get all of those in there, then you'll have a wonderful mix to play with. Uh, down in here, you can find out some really wonderful grays and browns. What I do uh, when I mix my, my grays, Typically, let me show you that on the palette here because I do have a good mix of that. 
This is the ultramarine mixed with the red iron oxide. And then you can just change the ratios back and forth to, uh, to do what you want to. And it's, it's a PR101 mixed with a PB29. So that would be the same thing as using an ultramarine and a burnt sienna. You might have a slightly different shade of your burnt sienna and yours might in fact be, be a PBR7, but this PR101 is really nice. And all of the earth tones should be good granulators for you. So if that's something that you're interested in, you know, keep that in mind. But I just wanted to share this with you today, how you can really take a color that you may not be too interested in and tone it down or punch it up. The buff titanium row is here and here. And those, you can see, you can really get some nice, kind of a robin's egg paint here, this one here, the, um, the Highland Green with the buff titanium would make a really nice robin's egg shade. And of course, you'll just have to play with your own and mix them on your own palette so that you can figure out which ones you really want to use uh, and in what ratio. But when you charge them together like this, you can really create some fun new things. And that's also one of the reasons I don't always clean my palette because sometimes you might have a gold mine here that you don't know about. You could mix some of these things together and come up with a really cool color that just wants to blend and move on the paper. I hope that you will consider to take a closer look at your paints. Go ahead and mix them, see what you can do. Take a look at the colors that you don't often use. Mix them with some of your primaries and see what you can get. You might end up with a larger array than you thought. And just think, these are only the 13 that I chose to show you today. There are a million more, infinite number of possibilities that you can create with uh, your favorite paints. Start yourself off with a warm and a cool primary, add your favorites, and mix and blend to your heart's desire. It will make you a much more competent watercolorist, and it will definitely help you to get the most out of your palette. Thanks everyone. Happy mixing. We'll see you next week. Bye now.